All right, take your homework out if you would. Please, books open to page number 20. And uh, we were practicing with our special triangles. Let me go ahead and, uh, if I can remember to drag the screen back over again here in a moment. We got our special triangles here, 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90, and of course the 0, 90, 90, which uh, has a little tiny angle because we have to draw an angle to get a triangle. But let's imagine it were 0 degrees. How big would the opposite side be, class? Zero. 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 And uh, then these two sides would match. I said for sake of ease, let's just call them both one. one. We have our true right angle in the corner, just as we do with all of them. But if this were a zero degree angle, then theoretically up here we would have a 90, 90 degree angle. And we were using those three special triangles to solve these problems. Number two, what did you get for the sine of 30 degrees, Quentin? One half. One half. Number four, Jamie? Um, so we were three over two. Square root of three over two, number six, Ethan. One. One. Number eight, uh, Chris. Two. Help him. Square root of two over two. Back to uh, Chris, number ten. Um, I got zero. Zero. Number twelve, Jamie. Um, square root of three over three. Square root of three over three, number fourteen, Ethan. Square root of three. Square root of three, number sixteen, uh, Chris. One. Help him. Undefined. Undefined. Number eighteen, Chris. Help them, Jamie. Square root of two. Square root of two, number 20, Chris. One. One, number 22, Ethan. Square root of two, or two times square root of three over two. Ooh, Quentin. Two times square root of three over three. Two times the square root of three over three, number 24, Ethan. Two. Two, number 26, Chris. Zero. Mm. Undefined, one over zero. Number 28, Chris. Jamie? One. One. Number 30, Chris? Mm, Ethan? Zero. zero. <laughs> okay. So, so, Chris. Now, let me ask. Did anyone get all of them right by any chance? Almost. Okay, how many? It was like two. Missed two. We got about two. Okay. So, I'm not trying to pick <laughs> on you. Uh, obviously, we need, we need some help here. Okay. So, Chris, the first one you missed was number two. Number two. The sine of 30 degrees. Okay, you have got to think first of all, what is sine? What over what? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. Then you must look at the correct angle. This is your 30. Opposite is 1 over hypotenuse is 2. It's literally 1 over 2. Then the next one you missed. The sine of 60. All right, same thing. It's still opposite over hypotenuse, but we're looking at 60 now. The opposite is square root of 3 over hypotenuse is 2. So it's literally oh, square root of 3 over 2. Why would you say you missed it? What was the next one you missed? I don't the answer you said. Oh. What was the answer? Didn't you, mark them all, like, didn't you mark them wrong as we went? Always, if you miss one on the homework, always mark it so that way we know how to go back and work on it. Let's just pick one at random. I know 8 was the first one I called on you for. Cosine of 45 degrees. Okay, for cosine, cosine is whatever what? Cosine is um, adjacent to right hypotenuse. So you look at a 45. Adjacent is 1, hypotenuse is square root of 2, so it's literally 1 over square root of 2. But we do have to rationalize. And there's our answer. So you have to think it's 1 over what? Now what angle do I look at? Now let me look at those two sides. And of course, 1's instead of X's, and we're kind of dropping the X's off here. Okay? So that's how we're going to do those. Let me give you another run through here. And um, I'm going to give you 60 seconds to solve six of these. Don't start until I say to begin. Close your books. Just have your spiral notebooks out. And Chris, let's see if you can redeem yourself here and confirm in your own mind that you can get this. 60 can we, seconds. Can we have no, no, you're not going to write a name. You're just going to write the answers. Okay. All you're going to do is write the answers. You have 60 seconds. Beginning. Right. Now.
So, all right. Quinn got them all done. How many did you get done? Four? Five? Four. All right. We've got to be really fast with these because, as I mentioned in our last lesson, these are not usually an answer to themselves. This is a means of getting an answer. So you're going to have to do several of these, for instance, potentially in a single problem. You've got to be super fast. So we're going to work on it. This is the first step in working on it. Sine of zero. We look at the zero degree angle. We say sine is what over what, class? Uh, zero over one, which is zero. Careful. Anything over zero is undefined. Zero over anything is zero. Cosine of 30. We look at the 30. Class, cosine is what over what? Adjacent over hypotenuse. There's adjacent. There's hypotenuse. Square root of 3 over 2. We look at 45. Tangent is what over what, class? Opposite over adjacent. It's one over one, which is one. 60 degrees. Cotangent. Ooh, and that's a reciprocal. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, which is one over what? Opposite over adjacent. So we're going to flip it. Adjacent over opposite. One over square root of three, which rationalized square root of three over three. Secant of 90. Look at the 90. Secant, well, it's the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is one over what? Jason over hypotenuse. Flip it. Hypotenuse over Jason. There's hypotenuse. There's adjacent. One over zero, which is there's the undefined Ethan. And then cosecant 45. We're going to go to the 45. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Sine is one over what? Opposite over hypotenuse. Flip it. Hypotenuse over opposite. Square root of 2 over 1, which of course is just square root of 2. How many of all the ones you did, you got them all right at least? I got the undefined. Okay, got the undefined thing wrong. You got them all. You went six for six. How many wrong? Three for four. Went three for four. I got it um, moved and wrong down to five. I did. Okay, so only two for five. Mm -hmm. Do we understand it better now? All right, tomorrow we'll practice with some more of this, but for now, we need to transition to looking at the calculators. Switch calculators out. And in our last lesson, I taught you how to find decimal degrees if you were given degrees, minutes, seconds. And the reason, very simply, your calculator is designed to take the uh, trig function, sine, cosine, tangent, and so forth, of decimal degrees, not degrees, minutes, seconds. So if we're given the DMS, we need to convert into de uh, the decimal degrees. Um, now, Ethan, you're working with a different calculator than last time. So let me see if I can help you with this. You actually have a degree, minute, second button, which is going to be a little harder to enter, but you do 9 degrees, 14 minutes. 23 second. Uh, that's not quite what we're looking for. Put the backspace on this. Uh, yeah, that's, that's not okay. Odd. Okay, 23 degrees. 14. This is weird. Yeah. I told you I hate Cassius. Which one's okay, so you can just hit the button, and if you do them all in a row, it's going to assume you mean this. And then you can take the sign, for instance, of the answer, which I think would be pre-answer, and it gives it to you. No, that can't be right, because that's not the sign of that angle. No, that's <laughs> Yeah, that's not correct. He has a sign button. Okay. So what you want to do, you could do, for instance, the sign of 23 degrees, 14 minutes, 56 seconds. Close the parentheses, enter. You can take the sign directly here. Yours allows you to take the sign of those where theirs does not. Um, that said, you have a whole lot more buttons to push. <laughs> All right. The rest of you, do you remember how to enter it on the calculator? Yeah. So quick review. If you wanted to enter 23 degrees, um, look, well, let me write it on the board first. So let's just say we wanted the same 23 degrees, 14 minutes, 56 seconds. I think that's what I put on Ethan's calculator. You would enter 23.1456, enter all the minutes and seconds as if it is the decimal degree, but then you'll do second function DMS to DD. And that'll give you the actual decimal degrees, which usually includes some sort of repeating decimal. And then you can take the sign by just hitting the sign button. And you get the point three nine four that Ethan got. Okay. Um, now, Ethan, like them, if you didn't have any minutes, 
23.0056. For you, you'd have to do 23 degrees, zero, de it's, again, it's gonna say degrees, but you know it's gonna change it, 56 degrees, and again, it's gonna change that seconds, then you can plug all that in that way, okay? You would, and of course, you would enter the sign first of all of that, and then hit equals, where they would hit, hit the sign after they get the angle set. So a little bit different way of doing these. Um, now, as far as actually converting to the decimal degrees is a different challenge. Man, because that's what that's the first thing they're going to want is convert these over to decimal degrees. Yeah. I probably just want to go ahead and notice that the other day. Yeah, or buy the right one. <laughs> the easier one to use. That I was in Zoom yesterday, and I couldn't go to the store. And I thought I was like, it's the TX or whatever. Yeah, I heard you too. Yeah, it was something like that. Oh, there's your delete PDEL stuff right there. Now, how do you convert that over? Yeah, probably. You know. <laughs> Maybe you can just leave the calculator with them after this class and yeah. go physics so you can. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not seeing the. I'll bring it over. Yeah, I don't. You're going to, so for you, since the very first thing is simply converting it over into decimal degrees, and I don't see a way to do it on that calculator, you're going to have to do the geometry way of divide by 60, divide by 60 again, and all that nonsense. But the rest of you don't have to. The rest of you, as you turn to page 22, and you do, uh, <laughs> well, you're going to do it, you're just going to do it the old fashioned way because you've got that calculator. Pages 22 to 23, do numbers 1 through 9 the odd. Numbers 1 through 9 the odd, you're just taking these degrees, minutes, or degrees, minutes, seconds, and converting them into decimal degrees. And since your calculator can't, Ethan will do it the way we did in geometry. Divide the seconds by 60, get your minutes, divide the minutes, including the decimal portion, by 60 to get your sec your degrees, and then tack on the whole number to the front end of that. All right, well, they're working. Do you need me to refresh you on how to do all that? I think I got it. Okay. Uh, can we do the first one? Yeah. So you'll start by turning the 45 into a fraction, 45 sixtieths, and divide that on the calculator. You don't even need the degree function or anything, just 45 divided by 60. All right, so then you're going to tack that onto the 15 and then give you, get your answer. Oh, okay. So, right. This next one, you're going to start with the, number three, you're going to start with the seconds and make a decimal out of that. So divide that by the 60. Number three. Mm -hmm. So start with the seconds, divide by 60. The seconds. Uh, seconds, 25. Right. Now, add the minutes now to that. So plus the minutes equals. Now divide that by 60 again. Now add the 32 onto the front end of that. And there's your answer in degrees. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> again, it's just, it's just making fractional parts. 60ths. It's just really unfortunate. Do you have a Casio? Oh, Casio. Love to hate Casio calculators. <laughs> I know how to uh, know this one now. Did you have a hard time in physics? Like, no, this is, I mean, because you can use degrees, minutes, seconds, it just can't change to decimal degrees for these, not that I've found. Which we don't do this often, frankly. So it's it's not the end of the world. It's not that his calculator's a total waste. Just for this lesson, it's obnoxious. All right, so the rest of them are done, Ethan. We're gonna go over the answers, and then you're gonna roll with them as we do the evens in a moment. Check your answers. 15.75 degrees for number one. Notice this have rounded four significant digits. So we're gonna round to 32.12 degrees for number three. I think it's like 32.1236, one, 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 repeating, something like that. Mm -hmm. We're gonna round to 32.12 degrees. Number uh, five is 4.250 degrees. Since they wanted four sig figs, we have to put the zero on the end there. Number seven, 76.01 degrees. And for number nine, 56.00 degrees. Anyone get all of them correct? 
questions. Which one or ones did we miss? So, number seven. Number nine. Number nine. So we need to enter 56.0017, second function, DMS to D. Because there are no minutes. It's 17 seconds, not 17 minutes. I messed it up and put it 56. Point one seven. Point one seven zero zero. Yeah, the seventeen is seconds, not minutes. So that's where you got to pay attention to the tick marks there. All right. Questions from Quentin and Jamie. Did you miss the same one, or do we have another one you missed? I missed five. I see what I did. All right. Go back into the evens now. Two through ten, the even. Again, technically, even this is more important for them than it is for you because you can actually enter degrees, minutes, seconds with trig functions. They can't. So. But still practice as you do the evens. Do you want to do the evens? Yeah, on axle. Double check and make sure they're done correctly, especially if they didn't have any uh, minutes in the middle, for instance, since it tripped you up on the odds. And again, if you happen to be watching on YouTube through our GCS mobile program, uh, do do make sure you know how to use the calculator. I'll set up a video chat with you if you don't know how, but you have to let me know that you need the video chat or I cannot help you. So please let me know if you're having trouble figuring out your calculator. Obviously there are YouTube videos available with calculators. If you're like, how do I do this on this calculator? You can type that question directly into YouTube. Probably there's a video for it. Okay. But if you'd like me to help you directly, I can do that as well. All right, and those with the GI 30XA are already done because it's the best calculator known to man. So let's go ahead. <laughs> Actually, the real test is going to be in what we do next, frankly. That's, that's where we're going to really have the challenge. Let's take a look at our answers here. Number two should have been 42.17 degrees when you round. Uh, number four, 81.88 degrees when you round. Number six, 35.25 degrees. Number eight, 24.01 degrees when you round. Wasn't it nice of them to put the zero minutes, by the way? And again, make sure you do two zeros, though. When you enter on the calculator, you need two zeros, not one. And then number 10, 60.68 degrees. Do we go five for five this time? All right, Quentin, which one are ones? Okay. Number 10, uh, again, you're going to enter 60.4040, then the second DMS to D. Oh, yeah, this is the same thing. We wanted rounded to four sig figs, though. So 60.678, okay. the would bump the seven up to an eight. That's all. This is rounding error. Ethan, of the ones you got done, did you get them correct? Three. I have three out of the five. Okay, questions? All right. Now for the real reason we were practicing with this in the first place. And again, Ethan, as I said, it doesn't really apply to you since you can directly enter these values in. But uh, that's for using your calculator to find these various trig functions. Notice number 11. It gives you a 28.40 degree angle. It wants you to find the sine of the angle, the cosine, the tangent, the cotangent, the secant, and the cosecant of that angle. Okay? I'm too lazy to rewrite the angle a bunch of times, so I'm going to do it this way. Well, since it's already got a decimal in it, class, you literally can just type, you guys, not you, Ethan, 28.4. You don't have to convert this at all. You just then hit sign. Ethan, for you, you'll actually hit the sign button first and then type 28.4 and hit equals. What do we get for the sign of 28.4 degrees class? 0.4756. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and fix your calculator three decimal places. Ethan, I believe yours can fix also if you took it off. Sign of 28.4. All right, and then we've got a fix on here. Okay. So for you, you have to shift to set up, six fixed to three, and now we take uh, excuse me, the sine of 28.4, it rounds to three, but to take the fix off, it's a lot harder. Like them, they turn their calculator off, the fix is gone, which is nice. You have to go back to shift set up, six is your, six is your fixed option, go to nine, which is the most decimal places, and it'll do nine places now. Really obnoxious, right? <laughs> so again, their calculator is easier to use, but uh, it does fix it. So uh, go ahead and fix it to three places. Is that what? Order? What? Are those orders? No, no, it's a, that's a brand new calculator. It's just, it, it's, 
Casio search is programmed different than, T than Texas Instrument. Now, while you've got this on the calculator, hopefully you didn't clear it off the calculator. How about the cosecant? Mm -hmm. Hit the reciprocal button. What do you get? 2.103. 2.103. Now, for you, Ethan, your reciprocal button, once you get the sine of 28.4, is up here the x to the negative okay. 1 means reciprocal. So you'll just hit x to the negative 1, which means your answer is reciprocal and it equals. Now, they only have to hit one button, you have to hit two. Yeah, big deal. Not that much worse. <laughs> You're literally just going to be twice as slow, but, you know, <laughs> it's already twice. That's what happens when you buy a Casio. Okay. All right, now take the cosine of 28.4 degrees. Call it when you've got it. 0.880. Someone else verify? Yes. All right, got a confirmation. The rest of you got 0.880? Mm -hmm. Hold on, I'm <laughs> you hit the cosine button, um, so, yeah. and then type in 28.4, and it equals. And then you have one extra button to push. Yeah, That's it. You just do it in a different order. Okay, now hit the reciprocal button. You hit reciprocal equals, and we get the secant. 1.137. Yeah. 1. Okay, now find the tangent of 28.4 degrees. Ethan might catch you on the next problem, because... 0.541. All right, and the cotangent? 1.849. 1. 1. 8, 8, 1. 8, 1. 8, 4, 9. All right, we good to go with this? Now, that's if you got decimal degrees. Ethan, yours is going to be a little different here as we look at 13. <laughs> but for the rest of you, 78 degrees, 30 minutes. What I'm going to suggest you guys do, now this one's not bad, but go ahead and convert this over to decimal degrees. Ethan, you don't have to, so just sit this one out. Go ahead and convert that over to decimal degrees. And it's really intuitive. 78.5 yeah, degrees, right? I mean, super easy, right? Because 30 is half of 60, so it's half of a degree. If this were weird, though, what you could do is you could store it in the memory. Yeah. And then you could take the sine of recall 1 and then take the reciprocal. If it were weird, I think 78.5 is easy enough, honestly. You could just type that in every time. But if it were weird, store it in the memory, and you could go from there. So we want the sine of 78 degrees, 30 minutes, and so forth. Now, Ethan, this one, honestly, you could type 78.5. But again, you could also take the sine of 78 degrees, 30 minutes, and get it that way, right? So um, what do we get for the sine of 78 degrees, 30 minutes, class? 0 0.980. And then let's drop down and get the cosecant of the same angle. 0.020. All right, get the cosine of 78 degrees, 30 minutes. 0.199. 0.199. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the secant of saying? 5.016. 5.016. Mm -hmm. All right, then the tangent of saying? 4.915. All right, and cotangent of saying? 0.203. All right, questions on this? All right, do numbers 15 and 17 at your seats. Now that you know how to do both this and the other, do 15 and 17 at your seats. Let's make sure we're good to go using our calculator to find trig ratios. I think I told you once before, when you get to pre I'm going to teach you how to do all kinds of stuff on the calculator. Yeah, well, all year it's going to be like this, teaching you new things you can do. So I know a calculator with this, like, intricate. Oh, yeah. They're, they're miniature computers. Well, I mean, I knew In that. fact, the first, quote, computer was invented by Blaise Pascal. It really was just a calculator. Him being a mathematician, what else would you need a computer for? <laughs> Internet hadn't been invented yet because Al Gore wasn't born yet. Al Gore. Oh, Al Gore? <laughs> <laughs> Is he dead now? No, he's still alive. He's born today. Just call him and he said I quote. Yeah, I don't I mean I haven't kept tabs on the guy. I want to hear politicians just randomly make stuff up off the top of their head that's so obviously false and easily fact-checkable as false. It reminds me of Al Gore. 
He was the first politician in my life that I ever heard just say things that were so blatantly untrue and stupidly easy to prove untrue. Like, it's not like you lied about something. It's like, how oh, they'll never catch me. It's just, you said that. And, like, everybody knows it's wrong. Like, so who do you expect to deceive with that one, you know? It's like saying two plus two is five. <laughs> it's for real. I mean, I graduated from the law school at the top of my class. You know, you were third from the bottom of your class. Oh, sorry. That's not the really? president. What? <laughs> um, that's so many. Everyone in that class. I'm just kidding. The second one. Are you just now starting the second one? Yeah, because it's If you're done already, go ahead and do number 16. If you're already finished, do 16 as well. Eh, make that 12. Do 12 as well. 12 and 16? Yeah, just 12. I changed my mind. Just do 12. All the way for Ethan. Yeah. And his Casio. <laughs> I just give you a hard time, Ethan. I don't really need you. Mm -hmm. I just act like I do. <laughs> no, if I hated you, I wouldn't have taken the time to help you. I'd say, good luck, bro. And would have left you to flounder aimlessly, not knowing how to do anything. So, clearly, I do not hate you. I do like to pick on you, though. Everyone does. Likes to pick on you? Mm -hmm. You're just so pickable, apparently. Quentin's pick. Quentin's pickable? Or Quentin picks on you? Quentin's pickable. Apparently, that's what Ethan said. He wouldn't lie, right? He's yeah, all president. I'm not a liar like right there. It's Biden. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, Trump. All right, I think that's all right, let's show you our look at our answers here. Number 15, check your answers. For the sine, 0.736. For the cosine, 0.677. For the tangent, 1.087. For the cotangent, 0.920. For the secant, 1.477, and the cosecant, 1.359. Got it right. All of them correct on 15. All right, number 17. This is the fun one. This is where I would have used the memory, probably. Okay. Uh, for the sine, 0.214, cosine, 0.977, tangent, 0.219, cotangent, 4.570, Secant 1.024 and the cosecant 4.679. Were we perfect on 17? Yeah. Excellent. Without memory. Good. Good. Yeah. Well, you don't need the memory for you. They might need the memory. Though it's actually quicker because you just do uh, recall blank sign reciprocal. Recall blank. It's actually faster than typing the angle in, to be honest. It's only two buttons. Him, on the other hand, typing all this stuff in. That's what I did. Because that would have been seven keystrokes, right? You'd have had to do one, two degree, two, zero degree, three, zero degree, and enter. That takes forever, doesn't that's it? That's eight key, or, or nine keystrokes. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, however many keystrokes. You're right, it's nine, so plus is hard. All right. We do not For those who got 12, uh, the sine 0.577, the cosine 0.817, the tangent 0.707, cotangent 1.415, secant 1.225, and cosecant 1.733. If you're watching on YouTube and didn't catch that, go back and replay it at 0.75 speed. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I did that on the music video when I watched it. You're like, I gotta speed this up. Oh, you gotta slow it down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, you um, can't comprehend. One of my favorite commentators on <laughs> politics and what's going on in America today is Ben Shapiro. Oh, I love, I love him. Ben Shapiro. I love Ben Shapiro. I love him. He's Jewish, he's not a Christian, so yeah. what you know, especially when he gets into matters of theology, understand he doesn't he's not he does not believe what the Bible teaches about Jesus Christ. But as far as conservatism, conservative values, traditional values, he's, so awesome. he's, he's awesome. Anyway, um, some, sometimes you have to play him at 0.75 speed because he talks faster than I do. Um, <laughs> so I, was, I was listening to him on Spotify at work. 
Yeah, like he's, all he's, of them. he's fantastic. Again, do I agree with him on everything? No, you're not going to find someone you agree with on everything, but a lot of issues. He says the word theoretically a lot. Well, that's because I mean, a lot of what he talks about is in the theoretical realm, you know, so. Anyway, like theoretically, if Biden were to tell the truth sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's let's move on. All right, the next thing we need to talk about is how to find the angles. And I want to take you back to algebra for just a moment. If I said 5x equals 35, you learned in algebra that to get x by itself, you'd have to get rid of the 5. And you get rid of it by doing the opposite of what it's doing now. Well, right now it's being multiplied. multiplied, so to get rid of it, you would divide. divide. And of course, you usually wouldn't show that step, right? But that's mentally what you would do. If we had x minus 2 equals 10, to get the x by itself plus, you would add, add 2, because that's the opposite. It's the inverse operation of the subtraction is the addition, right? If I had, this, or if I had uh, x squared equals 4, well, to get x by itself, I would take the square root, because that's the opposite, or the inverse operation of squaring is taking a square root. It cancels away the square. So what if I said the sine of some angle theta is 0 0.731? And I want to get theta by itself. I would have to get rid of sine. To get rid of it, we have to take the inverse function called the inverse sine. So in your notes, write this down, inverse trig functions inverse trig functions are used to find angles. Inverse trig functions are used to find angles. And so when I have the sine of theta equals 0 0.731, what I'm going to do to both sides, just like I take the square root of both sides, just like I add 2 to both sides, just like I divide 5 from both sides, I'm going to take the arc sine. It looks like I'm multiplying inverse sine. I'm not. It's also called arc functions an arc function, arc sine or inverse sine. I'm going to do that on both sides. But it's not that I'm, kind of like here, I take the square root. I don't multiply by square root. I take the square root. Same, same notation. I take the arc sine of both sides. Arc sine and sine cancel. And I'm left with theta equaling the arc sine of 0.731. Now, you'll notice on your calculators that right above your sine key is a sine negative 1. That does not mean reciprocal of sine. It means arc sine, though a negative one exponent does mean reciprocal. This technically is not an exponent. It's a notation meaning arc sine or inverse sine. So you guys, what you would do on your calculator, you'd start by typing in the point 731. Then you'd hit second function sine. Either on your calculator, second function sine, 0.731 equals. And what do we get for theta? 46.97, blah, blah, blah. And of course, we could round this off maybe to uh, 47.0 because I like one decimal place in my angles a lot of times. Um, but yeah, we could round that off. Make sense? So let's suppose we were I gave you that the sine of alpha were uh, 0.487, and I wanted to find alpha. Well, to get rid of the sine class, I would need to take the... Sign, like arc sine or inverse sine. Arc sine's fewer syllables, and I'm lazy, so I say arc sine. Class to get alpha by itself, I need to take the arc, arc, arc sine arc. of both sides. Here, arc sine and sine will cancel. cancel. By the way, you remember when we were working those co-function equations, and I said get the same function to match, and then cross them out? Technically, let's say it said cosine and cosine on both sides. You were taking the arc cosine of both sides to cancel it. You just didn't know that yet. Okay, so we take the arc sine of 0.487, and what is alpha? Uh, 29.144. Alright, so if we rounded to one decimal, we'd say 29.0.144. So 29.1 degrees? Yeah. Okay. And of course, since it's an angle, we will use our degrees. Okay. What if I said the uh, cosine of beta is 0 0.500, and I wanted to find beta? What would I do to both sides, class? Uh, take the arc cosine, or the inverse cosine. So, what is the inverse cosine of 0 0.500? 60.0 oh. degrees. Oh, that's right, because 60 degrees coming over here when it's not on camera anymore, cosine adjacent over at is at half or 0.5. That makes sense. But what if I gave you this one? The cotangent of gamma is 1.213. You don't have an arc cotangent button. So you're going to have to change it to one of the big three, one of the sine, cosine, tangent. So what I'm going to recommend you do here is change cotangent to tangent. 
Do this with me on your paper. And if you take the reciprocal of one side, you have to do the same thing to the other. I'm going to take the reciprocal of the other side. And now, I don't need an arc cotangent button class. Now to get gamma by itself, I simply take the arc tangent, because that's the function I have here. Now, a couple ways you could enter this on your calculator. You guys could do 1 divided by 1.213 equals, and then take the arc tangent. Or you could type 1.213 reciprocal second function tangent. Any of those would work. Ethan, for you, you'll actually want to do second function tangent, and then in the parentheses, one fraction, 1.213. That's going to be the best way for you to enter that on your calculator. And what do we get for the cotangent, or for gamma, if the cotangent is 1.213? 39.502, or just 40. Do we get 39.5 degrees? All right, Ethan plugging it in on his calculator as well. Yep. All right, so what if we had, for instance, the secant of phi is 2.740? What do you suppose we would need to do, volunteer? Okay, Ethan? Put the, like, change it to cosine. So change this to cosine phi equals uh, 1 over 2.740. And then take the? Uh, uh, arc cosine. Arc cosine. 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 At your seats, take the arc cosine of 1 over 2.740. 68. And phi is 68.6 degrees? Yeah, that's what I All right. Good, got it. Yes, sir. Um, so this works with all of them, but any, any angle? Right, any angle. Uh, well, you'll get you'll get your angle when you plug that in. Are we gonna have problems where we do this as part of a problem? Yes. Yeah. This will this will be working toward making it a, not an end unto itself. So there are that. problems that take like multiple minutes to do. Multiple steps. Yes. Multiple steps, which would take you know upwards of a minute or more to work potentially. All right. So let me give you several of these to try at your seats. Suppose we had the tangent of lambda. 1.372, the cotangent of rho, 1, the secant of psi, 3.451, and the cosecant of gamma, 2.307. Find for me the angles. If it's sine, cosine, or tangent, it's easy. If it's a reciprocal, you got to work the reciprocal through it. I would recommend showing your work so that you don't accidentally mess something up. Check your answers. Ah. Yeah, go ahead and work it on your calculator. Make sure you get that answer. Good to go. Fun, good to go. Jamie's checking her answers. What's the one, uh, the third one to try to look at things? Uh, this is called Psy. It's spelled P S I, but it's pronounced Psy like, uh, I think there's an Uncle Psy on the Duck Dynasty over there. <laughs> uh, so we got Lambda, Rho, Psy, and Gamma. All right. Yeah, I got shot.
You, you did? Okay, I'm sorry. All right, questions on this. It is memory then. <laughs> sure, Dustin's like, I don't care. Anyway, questions <laughs> on this. All right, in your textbooks now. Do numbers 19 to 29 the odd. 19 to 29 the odd. Notice one decimal place. It says round to the tenth of a degree. So one decimal place in your answer if you want to set a fix to the one decimal. I set my fix and then put it to three. So second fix one then. Oh, well, that's one decimal. Oh. Not sig fig, one decimal, which is exactly what we want. Now you can't fix to sig figs because your calculator can't do that. All it can do is fix decimal places. Yes, sir. There's a problem. There is a problem? Yeah, when I type in point eight, point eight five, put it in reciprocal. Uh huh. Put it in reciprocal for second point seven. Um, that's because you're trying to do arc tangent, right? What's the reciprocal of cotangent? Oh, okay. tangent. Yeah. You're trying to do the wrong function. Your calculator is like, you can't do that. It's very smart to do these, I'm going to keep this guy I think I'm going to pretty clean. Can you switch left? Still, I've gotten used to this one. Yeah, and, that, and there's, there's truth in that, right? I, I tell people, don't go getting yourself a new calculator right before you take a test, like the college board testing or anything. Get comfortable with one. So you done bought it now. I'm going to teach you how to use it as best I can. Get used to it. Use it. More yeah. complicated. All so right. Unless, of course, you have unlimited funds. Like, if you're really, really rich, I mean, you know, give it away to some poor kid under an overpass. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know you want food, baby. You want a calculator, kid? <laughs> you want to get yeah. shot? <laughs> Drive off fast. All right. Uh, number 19, 27.4 degrees for theta. Number 21, 29.5 degrees for alpha. Number 23, beta is 58.8 degrees. Number 25, theta is 32.1 degrees. Number 27, there's psi again, zero degrees. And for number 29, rho is 49.6 degrees. Did we go six for six? Excellent. Your homework for this evening is to do page 23. Numbers 14, 18, and 20 to 30 to even. Page 23, numbers 14, 18, and 20 to 30 even. For numbers 14 and 18, it says in the instructions round to four sig figs, we ain't been doing that. We've been doing three decimals. Do what we've been doing in class, okay? Because that's what I'll ask you to do on quizzes and tests. So just do it the way we've been doing it in class. So 14 and 18, three decimal places, not four sig figs. It may happen to be the same, but three decimal places. For 20 to 30, do what it says in the directions, 10th of a degree. All right. Have a wonderful rest of your day. When the bell rings, you will be dismissed. Oh, I forgot how to play.